Hello and welcome to another Baggy Brothers video. We're talking all things Albion and today we're trying something a little bit different. We are joined once again by our friend Baggy's Bulletin, Tom. Thank you for being here. Thank um, you for having me again, guys. Again. Always a pleasure to come on regular. and speak to you chaps. It's gonna be, eventually you're going to just be, become part of the Baggy Brothers. <laughs> That's it, yeah. That's just put my name underneath like, yeah. The Baggy Brothers Bulletin. Yeah, Baggy Bro it's got a good ring to it already, hasn't it? I like it. I like it. I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> Uh, we're doing something a little different today. We're having a look at uh, our best 11s. And today we've obviously we've got Tom on to speak about the best West Bromwich 11 that he could make of players that he's seen in his lifetime. How was it making this team? Was it a difficult choices at certain points? Or were there any was, names that were just guaranteed straight in? Yeah, it was, it was kind of 50-50. There were some guys in, that I just thought, yeah, he's got to go in there. You know, he's absolute favourite. He's going in, but then there was definitely a few other positions that were, it was a little bit trickier um, picking them for sure. So, um, but yeah, in the end, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy with my 11. It might not work in terms of a formation, <laughs> but you'll see why when we go through it um, in terms of the personnel and the formation. But yeah, well, let's go with it. You'll see what I mean when we get to what, it. What is the formation you've gone for? Oh, I've gone for a 4-4-1-1 four, four, one, one formation. Ooh, spicy. Something a little bit different. Interesting. I like it. Yeah. It's good. It's fresh. Okay, let's start. <laughs> start at the start. Start where, obviously, we're going to goalkeeper. Who's the okay. name? Goddamn. I've gone for Ben Foster. So this, this was one of the tougher ones for me because I, I was, it, was, it was a close one between Ben Foster and Russell Holt. Um, but in the end, I went for Ben Foster just for the fact that he was our goalkeeper in the Premier League, wasn't he? And he was our goalkeeper for what was arguably, um, wow, it was, it was easily our, the club's most successful period since I've been watching them and yeah. our most successful period in the Premier League. And yeah, he was just absolutely unbelievable. We got him for a snip, didn't we, from, from Blues? And yeah. yeah, he was just absolutely unbelievable for us. I know he had a few injuries and he had a few spells where he was out, but... Um, some of the performances he put in. The one that I always remember is that one against Liverpool away where um, he saved the Gerrard penalty yeah. and yeah. kept out Suarez about half a dozen times and absolutely unreal. So, yeah, I've gone for Ben Foster. Uh, great, great first, great first choice. choice. Yeah. Great first choice. Yeah, and and it, we always have to bring it up. Our granddad trained him when he was a kid. We have to bring it up. He's really? From, he's from our yeah. neck of the woods. Yeah. He's from Covington. Or Lemington, really, he's from, but he played for Covington and, uh, yeah, he was part of the, the youth setup. The youth setup in Covington Town. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so, no, that's always, cool, though. It's, I like it. It's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. And I always, always bring it up. I have to. Yeah. No, yeah. The closest connection we've got to the squad. <laughs> he's an Maybe awesome guy as well, isn't he? He's absolute top yeah. bloke. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, he is. Yeah. Really nice. I can't, help, I can't help but watch his YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good as well, isn't it? YouTube. That was what I was going to say. His YouTube channel is absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah. yeah, I like watching it as well. So, Who have you gone for at right back then? So right back, I was struggling a bit with right back, guys, to be honest. Because I don't think, since I've been following West Brom, we've had that many great right backs. If you, if you no. have, a, have a think. But in the end, I went for Igor Ballas. Um, that's a name I've not heard in a while. I went yeah. for Eagle Bias and I've gone for that just for the fact that the the Megson team, the, uh, obviously we got promoted to the Premier League for the first team. That Megson team is is one of my favourite teams and obviously Igor Ballas was the right back for that team and um, he is responsible for one of my favourite Albion moments of all time when he took that penalty away against uh, Bradford away where yeah. we were desperate, we needed to win the game and we got a penalty right at the end of the game. And I, was, I wasn't at the match, but I remember it vividly. I was in my living room with my dad listening to w, WM live and he obviously stepped up. And uh, I, think we, I think he was called the Iceman after that because he obviously stepped up under so much, so much pressure and slotted that pen away. To, to, we obviously jumped above the walls, didn't we, then going into the last mm. game of the season. Yeah, and he took that penalty away. So yeah, I've gone for Igor Ballis, aka the Iceman, at right back. Solid what about choice. on the other side, left back? Who's 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 pairing him? This was a no-brainer for me. I've gone for Neil Clement. He was just yeah, he was left back for a long time um, for the Baggies, wasn't he? Um, mm. He was part of that 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 Megson team, and um, he was part of them. The, he was part of the Brian Robson team after that as well. And yeah, yeah he was. 
he was brilliant. I just liked everything about Neil Clement. He was he was a cracking defender. He got stuck in. He had a great attitude. He was hard as nails as well, wasn't he? Yeah. And then he, every now and then he always used to step up and put those like worldy free kicks away. Free didn't kicks, it? Yeah. So his set pieces would. Were... It was yeah. either with him. It was either going row Z or yeah. it was going in. There was no like middle no ground with Clement, was there? No. So um, yeah. yeah, that was a no brainer for me. Neil Clement, I loved him. Even when he slotted in at centre back, he was still class wasn't he yeah yeah they were great there for us so go yeah, on talking se- talking to centre backs who have you gone for uh okay so my first centre back I've gone for Darren Moore uh I, I, we spoke about Darren Moore didn't we when I did a uh, video with you guys in the past I just yeah absolutely love Darren Moore um again you, you're noticing a the theme here he was obviously part of that uh, Gary Megson team that got promoted and Look, I think he'd be the first to admit he wasn't great uh, technically, you know, with the ball at his feet. But he was just like, wore his heart on his sleeve, just uh, gave his all absolutely every game. And, yeah, a fantastic defender. He was absolutely brilliant for the Albion. The Albion fans adored him as well. And, again, an absolutely top bloke. Lucky enough, lucky to have met him a few times. Um, uh and yeah, absolutely top bloke. So uh, yeah, Darren Moore is one of my centre backs. And then sitting next to him, and this this was this was a tough one again. I was kind of toying between a few players, but I've gone for Gareth McCauley on this one. Um, a funny story with Gareth McCauley was I remember I was on holiday when I was looking at my phone and I saw that we'd signed him, and I remember going to my dad. I was like, "Who the hell is this guy?" He was like. He must have been like 32, maybe. Yeah. And he was playing for Ipswich, wasn't he? Yeah. I'd never heard of him. I was like, who, who the hell is this? Like, what are we doing here? Like, at least the calibre of players we're going to be going for this window. And then, like, how wrong was I? He was just absolutely unbelievable, wasn't he, for us? Again, you know, he was he was part of the, part of the you know, successful um, Premier League West Brom team. Mm. Um and he always used to pop up with really important goals, didn't he? He always yeah. used to score yeah. some some big goals against the big clubs. The one that kind of sticks in my head is he scored one against Chelsea at home, I remember, yeah. um, towards the end of the game, and we and we beat them 1-0. And, yeah, he was deadly, wasn't he, from set pieces against... Yeah. Um, I think he got one against Liverpool as well, an important goal against Liverpool where we snuck it. It might have been that game I was talking about with Foster yeah. where, we, where we snuck the three points, but... Um, yeah, he absolutely loved Gareth McCauley. Real classy defender, wasn't he? I think that's probably the best way to describe him. He was yeah, yeah and he, brilliant. He started his his football career started quite late as well, didn't it? He? he wasn't he wasn't like part of a youth setup. He sort of appeared on the scene in his mid twenties. Probably why he was able to sort of play quite well in his later years. But yeah, no, love that choice. I think He's he was with like us. He was with us for something like six or seven years as well, wasn't he? It wasn't yeah, a short right, amount right. of time. Yeah. It wasn't a short season. Like he was like playing with us to quite a late age, and he was still doing the business week in, week out. Well, he came in under Hodgson. It was when Hodgson. It was the third. Well, the only full season we had with Hodgson, but it was that summer transfer window we brought him in. So yeah, he was with us from Hodgson until it must have been Pardew when Pulis went. Pardew around that time. So yeah, he was with us for a, he was with us for a long time. I bet you, if you looked at how many games he played with us, you'd be surprised at how many performances you know yeah. he had for the club but um yeah i love gareth mccauley brilliant player yeah i've got him on my uh he's the he's the name on the back of my six aside team kit got mccauley because <laughs> i'm a defender as well so he's a big man yeah go on then so who's on the who's on the um right wing we'll go right wing first okay so yeah so obviously i said i've gone for a, a four four one one so on my my right midfielder i've gone for zoltan Guerra. Yeah. Um, yeah, Guerra, uh, he was, I just absolutely loved Zoltan Guerra, just the way he played, he was he was like an attacking midfielder, wasn't he? He could play in the middle, but I felt he was most effective for us when he was out on the right. Um, yeah. And it was that Tony Mowbray team, wasn't it? It was the, the first spell he had with the club where, yeah, he was absolutely unbelievable for us. Um, again, I just loved his attitude. He gave his all and... Yeah. Just had a really fantastic work ethic and just technically he was brilliant as well, wasn't he? He scored like a whole, he scored like 
all sorts of different goals for us. He scored absolute screamers, but yeah. I remember him regularly getting into the box and scoring headers as well. He was brilliant in the air for us. And um, yeah, he was um, played a big role in one of my favourite West Brom teams of all time, the, 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 the Tony Mowbray promotion winning team. So yeah, on the right midfield, I've gone for Zoltan Guerra. Yeah, uh, no, uh, no arguments there. Yeah, none at all. Over on the left... Uh, so over on the left, uh, this was an easy one for me. I've gone for Chris Brunt. Um, he's quite possibly my favourite West Brom player of all time. Um, I just, I just, yeah, just loved it. I just absolutely loved him. I thought, you know, his left foot was probably the best left foot I've seen. Grace, the the yeah. Hawthorns, you know, unbelievable left foot. Some of those A lot of great goals. crosses and set pieces and Free three kicks. kicks. Oh. Yeah technically gifted and um yeah i just thought he was such a fantastic servant for the club wasn't he he's obviously one of he's up there with one of our all-time um appearances isn't he, he yeah. I'm trying to think where he sits on the list but yeah him and morrison they they just played a ridiculous amount of games for us because they were obviously yeah. signed at the same time and yeah just an unbelievable servant for us and obviously he's been with us we bounced up and down the divisions and he was there the whole time we had that long spell in the Premier League and every manager we've had they've always um they've always picked him haven't they I know they moved him around he obviously went and played left back for a bit of time I think that was yeah. maybe under Pulis yeah and then he was moved into centre midfield and he was given the armband at one point he was our captain for a period of time and yeah just just everything about him I just used to get absolutely infuriated when people used to give him stick because, you know, like anyone else, he had his poor runs and he had, you know, a spell of not playing particularly well. But yeah. again, he just gave his all for the club. He obviously, playing for the club, obviously held a special place in his heart and he always gave his all. So I used to get really upset when, um, you know, just small minority, but, the, you know, he used to get a bit of stick quite frequently from that small minority, didn't he? And, yeah. Um, but yeah, absolute legend, modern legend for me. Yeah. Chris Brunt is definitely. Yeah, exceptional player. A lot, yeah. lot of love for Chris Brunt. And a good captain, a good person to have around the dressing room as yeah. well. I think that's what we've missed since he's gone as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll tell you what topped it off for me was when he did his interview when he left. Did you see, do you remember his interview? Yeah. When it was obviously, it was announced he wasn't going to stay on at the end of the season and he did a bit of a extended interview with the club and he actually started crying in the interview you know when the guy was asking him about what he's gonna you know he's not gonna see the people of the staff and the people weren't there and you know you just don't see that anymore do you from footballers no. it's, it's something that's very very rare nowadays um so yeah absolutely wonderful servant brilliant player who have you got in the center of the pitch then so I've gone for two Scottish players in my centre midfield. Now, the first one was the first one was Derek McInnes. Um, he again, he was obviously the captain for Tony Mowbray. Uh, sorry, Gary Megson in that promotion yeah. winning team, and he was yeah the first captain, I guess, where I was like, okay, this guy's like a proper captain. The first yeah. captain, I was just like, yeah, no one else he's a better captain choice than this guy. He just like, he was just like a pit bull, wasn't he, in midfield? Yeah. And class. he was, yeah, just got stuck in and he was just animated and got fired up and just absolutely everything you wanted from your captain, wasn't he? And he was a great player as well. He yeah, he was, was yeah. a Great little player. He, he was probably more of a defensive midfielder, got stuck in, broke down play. But I remember him popping up with some absolute belters as well. Yeah. He had a great shot on him. Um, but yeah, I just loved, yeah, he was a brilliant, brilliant captain for, for, for Albion, obviously under Gary Megson. And um, yeah, I loved him to bits, to be honest with you. So yeah, Darren He's McInnes just... was my first centre mid. And then my other one might be a bit of a surprise. I've gone for Graham Dorans. Now... Good choice. He's a great choice. Well, yeah. well, I picked Graham Dorans because that season, he, when we went up second place under Roberto Di Matteo, again, I really enjoyed watching that team play. Yeah. That season we went up, he was just unbelievable. Oh, like he scored yes. like twenty odd goals from from midfield. I know there was a few, quite a few penalties in there, but but he probably assisted close to that as well. Yeah. He was for me. He was like the best player that season in the division by a country mile. And 
I just, yeah, just absolutely love watching him play that season. He was just brilliant playmaker, wasn't he? Great range of passing, but he popped up with a load of goals as well. And yeah. he was just the real, he was the driving force, wasn't he, behind that that team, the create, real creative force behind that team and obviously a major player in getting us promoted. And I was always a little bit upset after because he obviously had a few injuries and he, I think he had some personal issues yeah. and he never hit the heights that I thought he was going to hit. No, yeah, I, I agree. He, yeah, I thought he was going to take off, especially when we got promoted. But his kind of career stagnated a little bit and he, he did have some good performances for us in the Premier League. But yeah, yeah. yeah, he never hit the heights I thought he was going to. But I put him in there just pretty much for that season alone. I just absolutely adored watching him play that season. He was my favourite player by a country mile. He was brilliant. Yeah, he was yeah. class. Exceptional midfielder. Go on then, who's sitting in that cam position? So in my cam position, I've gone for Jason Kumas. Um I love every he single, was time, just, single time you say a name. Both me and Adam go. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got to pick he that guy. What like, a choice. Well, I just remember with Kumas, we, I think the, under Gary Megson, we'd obviously, we were, we were an effective team, but we were quite um, regimented, weren't we? It was very yeah. disciplined, defensive <clears throat> team. We never really scored too many goals. Um, there wasn't much flair to the team, was there? But I remember when... Um, Kumas was brought in, he was just that, yeah, he was just that creative spark we'd been lacking for some time, wasn't he? And he was he was good under he was good under Megson, but then I felt he really kind of came to life in that um season, the first season we had with Tony Mowbray, where we got to the playoff final. Yeah. And we had like um Kevin Phillips in the team, didn't we? And uh, Chris Brunt and Morrison had just signed. We just had like, you know, four of just attacking talent. And he was just ridiculous, Kumas. He just, he was quite an odd player. He didn't really look like a footballer, I never thought. He was a little bit kind of, I don't know what the word is, but like a little bit stumpy. I know what you mean. Yeah, he, did, he was, yeah. I know yeah. what you mean. And he had like a low centre of gravity. Yeah. But the way he just used to like breeze past oh. players. Yeah. And like, Every week, he just seemed to score an absolute world. He never did, like, tap-ins. Yeah. They were just, like, nah. curlers from the edge of the box or absolute screamers, or he took yeah. on, like, six guys. And, like, yeah, he was so exciting to watch. And, obviously, I was still quite young when we bought him and he came into the team. And I just remember going to the Hawthorns and watching him, thinking, oh, my God, this guy is something else. He's unbelievable. So, yeah, Always got the office seat, didn't he? Always got the office seat. He, he yeah, always 100%, got the seat. 100%, edgy seat like, player. Yeah, he, he was fantastic. Yeah, 40 yards out and I'll just smash one top bins. Yeah. Because I can't and I'm like, what? Yeah, no. Class. Every now and then I'll just go on YouTube and just watch Jason Kumas highlight yeah. goals, West Brom, and just sit there and just be like blown away because he just scored so many great goals for us. So, yeah, I had, to, on, I, had to, I had to get Kumas in here. And this is why I went for that weird formation was to try and to try and get Jason Kumas in there. Who have you gone and speaking of the last player, who have you gone up top and scores the goals? So I've gone... I, I had to go, in the end, I had to go with Kevin Phillips. Now, this this was like a real tough one for me. And to be honest, in the 4-4-1-1, Kevin Phillips probably wouldn't work too well. But I just think Kevin Phillips is probably the best finisher I've ever seen at the Hawthorns. Yeah, um, in in the, obviously the time I've been watching the Baggies, he was, he's, yeah, I... I Still yet to see anyone who just had that kind of striker, goal scorer, awareness, just knows where to be at the right time. Just unbelievable finisher. Um, he was just a goal scorer, wasn't he? He was just an absolute goal scoring machine. And it wasn't just tap, like he used to score tap ins and headers and, you know, goals from a couple of yards out. Like I said, he always used to be in the right place at the right time. But then he just scored absolute worldies from the edge of the box. And the one, obviously, that sticks in, in your head is that one against Wolves in the playoffs where yeah. he bent one in from the edge of the box. Absolute cracking goal. And, um, yeah, he's just easily the best finisher I've seen at the Hawthorns today. He just unbelievable striker. Because we, we had him late on in his career as well, didn't we? But like you yeah. say, you, you could just tell his well. quality. You could just see his quality, couldn't you? And like he should, I think he could have played a better level than he had, really. Like, I mean, like for a big club, I think he could have got into a big, big club. 
Yeah, uh, well, one of one of my best mates is a, is a big Sunderland fan, and obviously he was phenomenal for Sunderland. Had that yeah. season where he scored like thirty plus goals in the Prem for him, and. Yeah, we often talk about just how amazing Kevin Phillips was. And I think you're right. I don't think he gets probably the recognition he deserves in terms of every team he's gone to. He's just scored goals for fun yeah, for every yeah. team. So, um, yeah, but that was a tough one. Was, you know, we've had some real fantastic strikers over the years. Well, over the years since I've been watching West Brom. But, yeah, I thought I had to, I had to go with KP in the end. But, um, yeah, so that's, my, that's my team. That's a great 11. It's a yeah. really solid one. If you had to pick one player from this squad to go into our current 11, who would you pick? Oh, you put me on the spot there. I didn't, I didn't know that question was coming. <laughs> um, a surprise for you. Because there's a lot of people from that that would, would walk in. I think every single one honest. of them, every single one of them, I think, if, you know, if, if we're talking now about who we've signed, obviously, in the window and where I still think we were, we, you know, where I still would have liked us to bring someone in at the end of the transfer window, I'd probably have to go with Gareth McCauley, I'd probably go with. I think I was agreeing with, I agree with Adam what he said, that if I was being really greedy with the last transfer window and you know, the one that's just closed, I still think we needed a, someone else in defence to come mm. in because we're obviously still very, very shaky at the back. And I just think McCauley, in his pro, well, when he was playing under um, Roy Hodgson and Tony Pulis, which you know he was fantastic for us in those years. You know, it, playing like he was then, if he was to come into this squad now with his experience and know-how and how good he was as a defender, he'd almost certainly you know improve things at the back for us. So. Mm. Um, it's a tough question because obviously I've got some fantastic attacking players there and we haven't been fantastic in attack, but the amount of goals we've conceded speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think I've just probably put got that whole go back for... line, just bring them straight in. Yeah. Yeah. Prime. So I think I've probably got to go for the defender. So yeah, I'd go for, I'd go for Gareth McCauley, I think. No, great That's show. Top choice. Great choices. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing your best eleven with us, Tom. It's an absolutely yeah. exceptional squad. It's yeah, what a joy to look at that list of players, if they'd all played together at the same time. Yeah. It just like World makes pieces. you, it makes you a little bit upset now talking about all those amazing players, doesn't <laughs> this it? This is like, going to make you happy, Tom. This is a this happy is a thing. No, it hasn't, though. No. It's what's playing out, what's playing out at the moment on the pitch. And I've just oh, been no. talking about all those guys and how amazing they were. Some great time supporting the club. It's had the opposite <laughs> effect, guys. It's had the opposite effect. I'm sorry. I'm going to go and have a little cry now after this. All right. Am I going back to, to the, some more back puns? to the drawing board, Dan, I think. I'm going to have to tell more puns, aren't I? No, oh, no. God, no. God. Yeah, we'll leave that there. Thank you very much, Tom, again, for your best 11. Uh, obviously, click that subscribe button and the like button because those things help us out. All our socials are on the screen. And if you are a West Brom fan page or creator and you've got a best 11 you want to send in or put in the comments below, please do so. Give us a shout. And until next time, we'll see you then. Cheers, guys.